you should watch Fake Grand Order. Watch Fake Grand Order so you don't have to suffer anymore. Grand Order movies win. Now we need a Fake Grand Order review. Fake Grand Order? More like Fake Grand Blue. Okay, that one doesn't make much sense. That's right, today I'm reviewing Fate Grand Order, First Order, which I decided to do after throwing a dart at my dartboard of fates because figuring out the watch order of this anime is impossible. As usual, it's up to me to change the name of this anime to something a bit more realistic. Rising of the Shield Hero, Fate Endgame, and finally Fate No Way Home. If you're out of money because you wasted it all on 2D girls on Fate Go, be sure to subscribe to my channel because this graph told you to, and join my Discord. Let me give you a satire review, which will contain spoilers for this anime. Fate Grand Order is adapted from the mobile game, so if you've played the mobile game, it follows the story pretty closely. So Lunar, you're telling us we should play the game? No! God, please, no! No! No, I would never do something that cruel to you. This movie begins with a sleeping person, who is a potential master brought to Chaldea Research Facility so that they can race shift him to stop singularities that disrupt the flow of time. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? If you're confused, just play the game. I'm not playing your game! I may as well be sponsored by Fago at this point. Basically, this group is in charge of keeping humanity from going extinct. If the floating globe stops glowing, that means means humanity will die out. In order to prevent this, they will travel throughout multiple timelines and stop singularities. Yeah, it's basically Dragon Ball X in Overse. Back to the sleeping person and what is his name? Oh yeah, Ritsuka. I knew that. He's found by this squirrel looking thing, Speedwagon, and Mash. She tells him that, Oh, well, I don't need to watch this movie, it's 2022. Hello, outro Lunar here. Now he goes to a meeting held by the director, who's a strict boss. And just like when a college professor gives a boring lecture, Ritsuka takes a power nap, gets kicked out and excluded from the first mission. He meets Dr. Roman, who is in charge of making sure that the cannon fodder, I, I mean master candidates, stay alive. Time for the first mission to start, and why are these things called coffins? It's almost like it's... <sighs> Foreshadowing. An explosion went off, so Ritsuka runs to check on his love interest. Let's hear his train of thought. Man, I should really help this guy. Too bad he's not a love interest. There's Mash. Oh, she really got mashed. Too soon, man. Obviously, Sherlock, we're inside. Hey, what's that light? He gets sent through time and is attacked by somebody I never thought I'd see again. Ritsuka is then saved by... Hey, look, it's Mash. You can clearly tell that she's a servant now because she's wearing armor that increases protection. Mash became a demi-servant by hitting the fusion with another servant when she was dying and is now the shield hero. They pick up the director who got teleported there, run into Ryder, who is now a lancer. I will say that this movie is already a 10 out of 10 for one reason, dead Shinji. All right, Mash, get her. Why are you slowly scooting forward? Lancer appears and is now a caster. And while Ryder is much stronger than normal, she forgets one thing, and that is that she's now in the cannon fodder class. We discover that in this timeline, Thanos snapped his fingers and all humans disappeared, leaving only servants. Unfortunately, Saber woke up and chose violence and started a new Holy Grail war. When servants are defeated now, they become corrupt, protecting the singularity that the Fantastic Four needs to fix. They go after the singularity, and Caster pulls a Lancer classic and holds off a servant while the main cast goes ahead. Mash begins to fight an evil Saber, but she has it all under control. Ooh, but don't worry, I'm sure her friends will help. It's too risky. Meanwhile, Archer and Castor are having a battle of philosophies. Unstoppable force or immovable object? Uh, immovable object. I would go with unstoppable force. Although this may be a different timeline, it's still Shiro, which means according to Shiro 101, he must be folded at least one time per anime. Back to the Saber vs. Mash fight, and she's blocking against Excalibur. How did he get there? Did he just walk through the attack? Mash uses her noble phantasm Donald Trump and builds that wall. Caster takes down Saber, which further convinces me that the Lancer class is just cursed. Then comes the twist. Speedwagon was the villain the entire time. Chaldeas is now a black hole that, if touched, will trap you in an eternal moment of death. Olga is then pulled into it, but don't worry. I'm sure her friends will help her out. Is it too risky now? Don't touch the book. 
she touches the butt, Left says that he'll destroy humanity, and then we go back to base. There are now more singularities that they need to fix that are far more dangerous. So tune into the next episode of Fate Exynoverse to find out how many times can Shinji be killed. Now, let's talk about the characters in this anime, starting off with the one character that you can rename in-game. This is the most bland character that has no personality, no abilities, nothing. This character is the tofu of the Fate franchise. But Lunar, he's supposed to be like that since he's a playable character in the game. This is true, but if you're looking in terms of the movie, it's not a great thing. I mean, I can't think of a single thing that he did during this movie besides stand around like an NPC. Well, probably because he is an NPC. Can't even remember his name tier. We're going to build a wall. Introducing another servant class, the now for me class. Mashed Potato, who became a servant one way or another, then became a Pokemon that can only use protect. We also continue on the trend of characters that have very little personality. I can't really think of many things about her besides the fact that she has an inferiority complex. Build that wall tier. Olga, who is my personal favorite, Budget Rin. I mean, she even uses stone magic and shoots magic in the same way. I was kind of shocked about what happened to her because she was my favorite non-servant character in the movie. Acknowledged by none tier. Lancer or caster or whatever you call him. Why was Lancer more of a caster than any other caster that has a appeared in fate so far. Unfortunately, now that he is a caster, he may assault people in a particular way. I'm so glad that the Lancer class finally won, even if he really didn't win and really wasn't a Lancer, but I'll still take it. Stay away from Lance's tier. Left, who was a character in the short story Clock Tower 2015 that I didn't bother reading. As of the first movie, he has to be the most stupid smart villain that I've ever known. He was responsible for the explosion to take out the master candidates. Okay, great plan. Let me just check the number of master candidates that were confirmed dead. Oh, zero, just all in critical condition. Did he at least kill the main threat, Dr. Roman? Nope, guess not. Failure yeah. tier. Dr. Roman, who was the guy in the chair. He's basically the tutorial man telling you what your mission is. This is probably the only character that isn't completely bland, but doesn't get a lot of screen time. Being late is good tier. Oh no, she killed Shinji. Oh no. Anyway. She has a lance that if she hits a target, they'll never heal from it. Sounds familiar. Unfortunately, this isn't Heaven's Feel, so she won't be sticking around for too long. But because she killed Shinji, Shinji slaughterer tier. Oh, and I guess Saber does the usual Saber stuff, being controlled by someone or something. Bet you wish you weren't being controlled here. Time for final thoughts in rating the anime. The story is interesting, and I think that it can lead to many different great stories. So I would say that for a base, this movie is pretty decent. The main thing that ruined this movie for me is the simplicity of the characters, who I honestly had to look up all their names because they're all forgettable. This is mostly because it's adapted from a game, but I still would like to see more character development in the anime when I watch it. When it comes to the plot, it was very very confusing if you haven't played the game, and a little fast paced since, you know, it's a movie. Ufotable also completely ruined animation for me. While the animation in this movie is good, after watching Saber vs Rider, all other fights don't even come close. This movie is clearly one big mobile ad for the more religious Fate fans, and while it is great in that regard, it's definitely not for newcomers to the Fate series. I also have no clue where to go from this movie, so somebody please tell me in the comments section what I'm supposed to watch next. While my anime list gave this anime a score of 6.7 out of of 10, I will be giving it a score of 7.1 NPCs out of 10. Hello, Outro Lunar here. Click here if you want to see my channel. Click over here if you want to see my most recent video. Click over here if you want to see the recommended video. Alright, bye.